It's easy to make assumptions and judgments when watching someone inside of an interrogation room. Usually, someone isn't that experienced in how they should act and react in order to maintain the image of innocence, and the sense of guilt can be obvious to any outside observer. But what about when someone is being interrogated that has fully embraced a life of crime, living in the underworld, and taking on the role of a career criminal? This is Mark Denclaw, the president of the Gypsy Joker Motorcycle Club in Oregon, and the circumstances of how he ended up in this interrogation room are rather strange. You see, Mark Denclaw is heavily involved in organized crime involving the Gypsy Jokers, so being questioned by the police is just part of the job. But roughly a year earlier, a former gang member, Robert Lee Huggins, aka Bagger Bob, was found dead in a field in Clark County, Washington. The events that transpired before Bagger Bob's body was discovered raised some investigators' eyebrows. Something must have happened for Bagger Bob to face such a brutal end, but for his clubmates to not respond to an attack? Well, there was obviously something criminal afoot, but who was responsible was still a mystery. Investigators believe that the best place to get some questions answered about the club's activities was from the club's leader, Mark Denclaw. This is the interrogation of Mark Denclaw. This is Mark Denclaw, president and leader of the Gypsy Joker Motorcycle Club. On the surface, Mark is sitting in this interrogation room because detectives had questions in regards to some of Mark's stolen property. But the real reason is because they wanted to speak with Mark about the murder of ex-clubmate Robert Higgins, a.k.a. Bagger Bob. Mark? Yep. And this guy, Curtis, with the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Kevin right. Harper. What's your oh, name? Kevin Harper. Kevin? Also with Clark Harper. County. What's going on, fellas? Well, um, obviously we're not from Portland. A couple things we need to do before we chat, um, and then we'll, we'll explain everything. Um, just so you know, everything in here is recorded, right? Okay. Police station, it's always recorded. You understand sure. that? Okay. And because you are in a police station, i got to advise you of your rights. Okay. Thank you, sir. It's okay if I call you Mark? Sure. All right. Do you have some American classes where we work? No, let's where I hang out. I don't really work there. I hang out there. Where do you work at? I don't have a job. I work on bikes. I do bikes for anybody who's willing to pay me. I've been done for years. Very good. Hard as a mechanic. Where's the last place you worked at? Van Nuys, Harley Davidson. Is that in Portland? No, it's in Van Nuys, California. Go Van Nuys, California. Mm -hmm. Um, you're you're with a, a motorcycle club. You have some affiliation with one. Is that right? I don't have any answers for the for questions like that. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking is that uh, a few months back, uh, a gentleman named Jeff Sudan. You know him? He threw your name out in conjunction with a, kind of a, a repossession of a car, a collection of a car. Does that sound familiar to you? No, Jeff Sudan almost. Might. I'm not sure about that. It seems like sedan rings a bell somewhere, but no collections of a car. No, I don't know what okay. you're talking about. But where do you live, sir? Uh, down by Salem. Okay. What, what's your address? Um, you answer, it's on my driver's license. It's one I don't have your driver's one license. One you guys have my fold. When detectives ask for Mark's information on his driver's license, he's very standoffish and confrontational. This is one of the first times that we can see that Mark is very experienced dealing with police and being in the interrogation room. This is actually the address. Oh, okay. Right down by Salem. 
Okay. And you're living with a gal down there, is that right? No. I kicked her out. Oh, She good. comes and stays. She stayed, but she can only stay for three days at a time. She's kind of a transient. Huh. Okay. She's, she's, I took her off the lease and my, my, uh, the people that I rent the house from said mm-hmm. she can only stay for three days at a time. So okay. If somebody looks in the house, they'll see all her stuff in the bags and stuff all piled there on the floor. So when did you kick her out? <laughs> Which time? I kicked her out a lot of times. Numerous times? Yeah, she just calls me and she's with no place to go and stuff and get tugs on the heartstrings and I pick her up and let her stay for a little while again. It's just, it's, kind of, it's a love hate thing. Okay. Long so, how long did she stay there before the in and out stuff? Um, she was there from the time I moved in until. Well, I mean, not steady. She's never been steady there. She's always gets kicked out or moves out and goes and stays with somebody else for a while. And mm-hmm. She just kind of transients around. And who's, what's her name? Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, what's her last name? Um, her married name is, uh, I think. You know how she spells it? Okay. How old is Nicole? She's 36. Does she have any other last name she goes by? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. She's 36. I can't even remember what her maiden one was. Yeah, I think she's 36, okay. 35 or 36. And when she's not with you, where does she stay at? <laughs> other guys, uh, sometimes her moms. Play, you know, where does her mom stay? Uh, Staten. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where Staten is. I'm by Almsville. I'll by Give me a bigger city. <laughs> <laughs> now, there isn't really anything out there. Detroit Lake. Oh, okay. I know where that, where that is. All right. Okay. So this last time, how long has she So been? there's my background. That's it on Nicole. What else you want to know? Okay. Is Nicole the, the problem here? I mean, uh, I know that she's had the cops over a few times. Okay. And, and uh, she's had problems with the hospital and her... her, her her. Tell me about the hospital. Well, if you don't yeah. know about it, then that's not what you're talking to okay. me about. You know what Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that what you. this is about? No. Is it about the other night? It does involve Nicole. So okay. I don't know what, what the hospital thing is, so if that's not part of Nicole's issues, then... Uh, okay. So... Again, Mark pushes back against detectives, ending the part of the conversation where he answers questions and provides information. His very firm and aggressive behavior in ending the line of questioning is noteworthy once again because of how sharply he alludes to him being done answering their questions about Nicole. Nicole had a, uh, uh, it, well, let me back up a little bit. How long have you been in a relationship? I'm not going to answer Nicole? any more questions about Nicole. Okay. I don't have any more answers for you until I find out what you're talking about. Okay. Well, I'm I'm you guys to... brought me in. I didn't bring you in. I want to hear what you got to talk about. Well, I'm trying to get to that, but part of that's going to involve how long you've known Nicole. Well, that's, you're going to, if, you, if you don't want to tell me what the heck I'm doing here, say so. Because I'm not going to sit here and give you a bunch of my background mm-hmm. so you can play whatever kind of game you're playing. This is kind of stupid, man. I okay. just got picked up. And, and treated pretty roughly. You can still see the, the uh, marks on my hands. This one was completely asleep all the way here mm-hmm. and thrown in a room, a complete silent room there. I want to know what the heck's going on, man. Okay. Did you know Nicole back in October? October of this year? L- uh, last year. Uh, 2015. Well, yeah. Okay. You guys were living together off and on. I told you I'm not going to answer any more questions about Nicole until I find out what this okay. is about. Is this a domestic thing? And if so, why am I do- what am I doing in Portland? Well, it, it's it's kind of a domestic thing. Uh, Nicole uh, took off in a car that she may have uh, uh, had, I don't know, had purchased with assets that belonged to you or something like that. And oh. then Jeff Sudan and a couple other guys kind of returned that car to you. Does that make sense to you? Is that or attempted to? Or attempted no. to? Hell okay. no. Okay. The detectives mentioned that Nicole was picked up and may have been in possession of some of Mark's property. Remember, a few moments ago, Mark said that he was treated very roughly and placed in handcuffs. If they wanted to talk to Mark about some of his stolen property that was recovered, why was he placed in handcuffs, and why was he in an interrogation room? It doesn't make any sense, and Mark is acutely aware of this as well. Okay. You guys are so, so, why would, so why would they throw Well, I'm not going to answer your questions, okay. but because, of, but without a lawyer anyway, but just because I don't like the reaction, but... You guys are way off, man. Okay. You guys don't know. I, mean, I don't know who's telling these stories. Okay. And I'm not sure who Jeff Sudan is, but I can tell you right now, nobody's ever returned a car to me okay. from anybody ever in my life. So if we got the story wrong, can you help us out with that? Well, what I'm not going to straighten your story out. No, I'm not. Okay. Not until I find out why I'm sitting here. Okay. I don't understand. 
Uh, this is about Nicole stealing a car and stuff. No, not stealing necessarily. But well, why are you playing games? Tell me what I'm you're talking about. I'm not trying to play games, but okay. it, I'm trying to get it at the, the root of what caused this whole thing. Like I said, this gentleman's. I'm looking for the crime, is what I'm looking for. What fucking car are you talking about, man? I think it was an Acura. Does that sound Okay, well, well, what about it? Okay. She took off in an Acura. No. No? No. Okay. You're wrong. I, I'm not going okay. to tell you the story because it's a personal story and there's no crime that I'm going to... Okay. I'm not going to press charges about anything. Okay. And I would be the only... And the story that you're talking about, there's only one person in the world that could press any charges about it and that'd be me. Okay. And I'm not yet pressing any charges on All her. All right. And nobody returned any car and she never took any car from anywhere. So you got the story completely wrong first. Okay. So before you come talk to me about those kind of stories, you should get them right. Okay. Get them straight, man. How would I get them right without chatting with you? Well, because I'm not here to for to give you information. That's not my. That's not what I'm okay. about. I'm not a cop. I'm not going to sit here and feed you information. I don't know. What, I'm here for some reason. I don't know what your mm -hmm. deal is, but you haven't explained that to me yet. Until then, I got no more answers for you about Nicole or cars or anything else. Uh, I don't even know what what the hell. It, mm -hmm. Why wouldn't if if, if it had to do with if this has to do with that car? Why in the heck am I not the one pressing the charges? <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, well, I see your point. Yeah, well, that's a pretty good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How far back do you want to? Mark has left no doubt that he will not be answering questions about the current issue, told the investigators that their reasoning for talking to him doesn't make sense, alluded to wanting to a lawyer present but not directly asking for one, and heavily implied that he wants to know what the real reason is that he's being questioned for. From here, investigators will begin to switch gears towards their real line of questioning. Note how Mark's demeanor, both verbally and physically, is very calm. He shows no fear or concern about anything that detectives are saying or referencing. Brushing the police off and pushing back against them are just another day in the office for Mark. Let's go back. So you, so you don't know Jeff, you said you don't know Jeff Don't Sudan. know Jeff Sudan, no. Would, would you maybe recognize a picture of him? Well, that would, you know what, anybody that you're going to show me, you'd have a lot better chance showing me a picture than getting Fair me. Because I do not know people's names. Okay. That looked familiar to you, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. What, what do you know that guy by? I, I'm not going to answer your questions. I told you. I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say, okay. and I'll pick what I want to answer, but I'm not going to tell you information about people I know. Okay. I'm not a cop. Okay. Well, that's I'm a picture gonna... of Jeff Sudan. Oh, okay. I did not know that was that guy's name. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Now I'm starting to put it together. Okay. Okay. Now I kind of know. Would, would you tell me how you know that man? Or no, you know no. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give you that information. But uh, I kind of know what we're talking about here. But okay. I thought that those charges were dropped on him and stuff like that. Okay. Well, he was with another gentleman too, right? Um, when this thing happened, yeah. that's what I heard. I, w I wasn't there. No, I know you weren't there. Oh, okay. But, I, but you know some of the background. Uh, well, I might know some of the background, but I'm, like I said, I'm not here to try to answer your questions. You're going to have to get the answers. Why can't you? All these answers you should be able to get from that guy. <laughs> some of them, some of them I don't know him very them. well, by the way. But I don't know him very well, but I know, okay. I know exactly who he is. And, uh, but I don't have the answers for you as far as that stuff goes. Okay. You know I mean? Well, a few months before this car thing happened, um, Nicole was at your house, and uh, somebody busted in the house and uh, roughed her up a little bit, tied her up. You remember that? About a year before this interrogation, in 2015, Mark's home was broken into and some of his personal property was stolen, including a large amount of cash. The story that the police have is that Nicole was at Mark's residence at that time and was bound and attacked by the intruder. Who that intruder was, or if they actually existed, is a mystery, or so Mark wants the police to believe. The person who stole from Mark was actually Bagger Bob. Um, you know, I can't really answer to that. You're going to have to take, get that story from her. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to answer to that. Because, But uh, I can tell you again, once again, <laughs> and you're going to find out that you are completely wrong. Okay. So she, that didn't happen? What's that? I'm not going to go there. I'm going to let you say we're wrong. Okay. You're, you're you got, you got the story about? all wrong. Okay. You got the story all wrong. Okay. And uh, well, if we'll you ask around about Nicole, you're probably going to find that, that you got a whole bunch of stories wrong, man. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not going to sit here and slam on Nicole, and I'm not going to sit here and tell Fair stories enough. about her or anybody else. Would you tell me what we got wrong about the, uh, that? that, that never right? happened. That, that's not 
That's not what happened. I'll okay. tell you that. I'll say that is not what happened. Okay. Nobody actually came to the house. Okay. All right. what, what did happen? Then? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. I'm not going to let her tell you. I'm not Mr. Rat who's going to sit here and tell, on the, tell Nicole's life story to anybody. Okay. You know what I mean? She, if she wants to tell you mm-hmm. that what happened, she will. And uh, believe and she anything about what you took the car and the whole thing you're talking about, uh, ask her. Ask her. It's not my story. It's hers. Okay. Who did you tell about what did happen then? Oh God, tons of people, man. Okay. Can you give me some examples. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna sit here and name names for you, man. Mm-hmm. If you think I am, you're just barking up the wrong tree. Okay. You That's really cool. are. But but I'll tell you what what. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really understand why this stuff that you're talking about with this dude and the car stuff, why would that get handcuffs put on me? Well, why would those handcuffs go on me? What did I, what, what did I do that was illegal in any of that stuff? What did I even have to do with it? I wasn't even there for any of it. None of it. Okay. Not anything that you've talked about so far. I was a long way away from it. Mm-hmm. So why would I get handcuffs put around my fucking wrist for it? Well, where were you when that happened? Well, I man, I know where, where, where you're talking about. I wasn't there involved in anything that, that happened when if there was a story made up about mm-hmm. this theft thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. If, that, if, if that's the story that you're talking about. And the car thing about the whole fucking car deal. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there. I wasn't involved in it. Okay. You know what I mean? I know. And I'm not going to tell you the story about it. You can get that from other people who well, want to tell stories. Some of it we have. I'm not going to. So back in the middle of June, do you recall getting called by a FedEx guy from your house? Yes. I, I, I know about the FedEx guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, sure. so tell me about that. Man, I shouldn't even fuck it. You know, I'm not trying to... Uh, I, I'm not, not going to try to do anything that's going to get Nicole in any kind of trouble, man, because I'm not here to try to get her in trouble, all right? Unexpectedly, Mark pivots. He went from being tight-lipped about Nicole's activities to seemingly being conflicted about needing to tell the police about Nicole's nefarious activities in her personal life. Mm-hmm. If that's what this is all about. And I don't under, really understand, but I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> you know what? If you want to hear this story from me, you get Nicole here, too. Okay. Both of us in the same room. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, we well, that's the only way. That's not going to happen. Because I'm not going to tell behind her back. What this, I'd love to tell you, tell you the truth, but I don't want to do it behind her back. It's against my personal rules. I'm not going to sit here and talk to cops about anybody behind their back. But I would like to have her here so me and her can... So we can I'm, I'm a little bit confused, too. Look, Nicole, tell them this and tell them that. I would do that in front of her. To try to get this straightened out, because I don't. You guys are just got the story. So the story is so fucked up. And if you really knew what the deal was, well, like I said, if you really knew what the deal was, you might. I don't know if you'd arrest Nicole or not, but I'm not going to get her arrested. You know, I don't. They were, I'm not pressing the charges on her for anything that happened then. If that's what so the deal is. I guess I'm a little bit confused because when when Nicole, you're saying it's a story. We have when Nicole says that. She's basically there's a robbery at your house and there's an incident. The FedEx guy calls you, lets you know this story. What she why would she be in trouble? Why you're saying you don't want to get her in trouble. Why would she be in trouble for that? That's what I'm, I'm missing. Because she deep. I'm a, OK. I, all right, man. Uh, you know, I, I wish Nicole's here. I feel like a piece of shit for even talking shit behind her back. Nicole set the whole fucking thing up. That was her and her friend. They fucking zip tied her. They knew the, UP, the fucking guy was coming. Which that was a setup. She robbed me. She even brought the stuff that was robbed. She brought a bunch of it back. Man, that's her and her friends. I've been, if you want to know the fucking truth, I've been robbed by the girl so many fucking times you couldn't even count it. Really? And this, and, and that, that whole robbery right there, that stuff. Mark says that Nicole was the one who robbed them, even though he knew it was Bagger Bob. Bagger Bob broke into Mark's house and stole items and cash from him to pay for a heroin addiction. Mark and the Gypsy Jokers found out it was Bob and, as a punishment, made him pay the ultimate price. Mark spins up a bold and very risky story that Nicole and her friends were behind the robbery. He would go on to say that she returned much of what she stole in hopes that the story would be confined with no other parties involved, i.e. Bagger Bob. This story also opens up a potential hole. If Nicole doesn't verify Mark's story in questioning, then the police are back to their initial and correct belief that Bagger Bob was the burglar and assailant and was brutally killed in a field by Mark and the Gypsy Jokers as punishment. 
that with everything she stole from me then that she couldn't she brought back everything she couldn't sell on offer up her and her fucking junky friends and that's what fucking happened there man it was a it was a total lie i know it was i know it was for fact she like i said her elf held her mom knows she told her mom what all fucking kind of stuff was stolen in this big robbery. And then her mom comes over when, when, when I was throwing her out. And her mom starts looking at all the stuff and goes, oh, shit. Here's something. Here's something. This was stolen. This was stolen. All the stuff that half the stuff she told her, anything she couldn't, her and her friends couldn't sell on the fucking uh, offer up, she brought back after she wanted to be back with me and stuff. What items did she take or try? Well, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lay out a big old thing for you. Ask her if you, you know, if you can get the truth out of her. Ask her, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm not going to be your storyteller, you know? All I can tell you is is you're barking up the wrong tree, and I don't even know what the fuck it has to do with you guys when I'm not, if I'm not mad about the shit, if I forgave her for the everything that you're talking about, I know about the car, you got the story, car story completely fucking wrong too. Okay. You know what I mean? But and, but she was an asshole in that story, and I for, I can't say I forgave her for it, but I sure as hell didn't, press, didn't go press no charges on her, and I was told to. At the time, I was told by a lawyer to press charges on her. And I told the lawyer, I said, man, all my life I've been people, telling people, don't use the cops to handle your business. So is this my price? Is this where I go, you know, go against my judgment and, and go have a, you know, have her fucking arrested or something like that to get my shit back? In any case, it's my own personal problems. I chose to live with them. Mm-hmm. I lost a lot because of the girl, you know what I mean? And, but I'm not pressing the charges, so I don't see why you guys care. Okay. Who's her junkie friends that were helping her with? I'm not going to tell you names of people. You, you didn't hear me the first time? I'm not sitting here naming people for you. All I'm doing is telling you, you've you got your stories really screwed up. And I don't even know why you care. Because yeah. I sure as hell ain't, ain't going to press my charges on her. I'm telling you that. So, <laughs> you know, if, you got, if it's about Nicole, and why, and why would I get handcuffed up and brought in like that if you guys are mad because Nicole went and bought a fucking car with my money or whatever the fuck might happen? Okay. Is Bagger Bob part of that? Part of her junkie friends? Bagger Bob? Yeah. That ring of bells? What you talking With Mark telling tall tales, investigators know that they need to be a little more direct with the interrogation. Mark will not, by any means, be telling the police any sort of helpful information, so they opt to bring up Bagger Bob's name into the equation and redirect focus of their questioning. Yeah, I know who that is. He's fucking the guy that got killed about a fucking year and a half ago. Okay. Yeah. Was yeah. he one of the ones who set this up with Nicole? Man, you know, you're going to have to, if you're trying to, trying to like, tie that into this or something like that, you're going to have to talk to Nicole about that. Okay. Well, I was yeah. asking you because well, you, you said it was her junkie friends, and I, I assumed that meant you knew who um, the junkie no, were. No, 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 not the kind of junkie that mm-hmm. I heard he was. She's not that kind of a junkie. Okay. Can you help? What, what kind of junkie is he? I, I, I don't know. You, I, I'm sure you probably know better than I do. Uh, <clears throat> so when you say your junkie friends... Yeah, that, I'm not talking about any of our ex-fucking club brothers or anything like that. No, okay. Not. All right. I'm talking about her friends, not my friends. Got it. Okay. okay. So was Bagger Bob one of your friends, not hers? Yeah, well, you know, like, like I said, you know, actually, hey, if now that fucking you're starting to bring his name into it, and he got killed. Now I don't think I have any other questions to answer for you. Now I think having a lawyer here might be a good idea. Okay. Sorry. I think that'd be a good idea if you're starting to ask questions about a dead guy. As expected, the police have pushed too far for Mark's comfort. And again, he brings up possibly wanting a lawyer since their questioning has shifted to a homicide victim. Note that Mark hasn't directly said he will not be answering questions without a lawyer present. There's a very fine line that Mark needs to walk on. If he asks for a lawyer, he may look guilty, even though he has every right to. If he doesn't ask for a lawyer, the police will continue to relentlessly question him. Okay, well, let, <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me clarify something with you. Okay. Uh, do you want us to keep chatting, or do you want to talk to a lawyer? I need to know that. Um, well, it, we can keep it, chatting, you but you have to If tell you me. want to tell me what I'm doing here and what reason, I may, be able, I may try to help you out with that, but it's going to keep me in the dark, but then i got nothing else to say either. Okay, so I, I still need to clarify with you that that one point because you mentioned you know a lawyer and I need to know if, if you want a lawyer now or if we can keep chatting. This is what you I can know. keep chat. I'll keep listening a little longer before I before I call in a lawyer. Yeah. Okay. When uh, uh, the FedEx guy called you, uh, you came down to the house with a friend. Yeah. Oh, you went you went to your house by yourself? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What did the FedEx guy tell you? Um. He said, "Fucking, uh, 
You know, I'm not going to get into the story. I'm not going to get into the story. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about it. That's Nicole. Nicole's going to have to tell you that story if you want to hear something from her. If you got her all involved in this, well, you know, Mark, let me say this. Person. We have story. You're saying their stories, so whether they're true or not, that's what we're trying to find out. Okay? Right. 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 That's what. That's our job. Okay. You realize that, right? Sure. And as cops, so if there's incidents happen, we got to figure out what's true and what's not. Okay. And we do that by talking with people. Okay. okay. Obviously, that happened a while ago, so we've been working on this for a while. Months. Okay. Okay. That story starts a much larger story that we have, right? Starts okay. with at your house with a theft happening that includes Nicole being there, okay? And a Fed, there's a FedEx guy calls you, right? Right. 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 So this is where everything. <laughs> I wish, no, that's why I wish she was here, right? So she could straighten some of this. So this has been going on for a while, and you and you keep telling us, talk to Nicole, talk to Nicole, get the story from her. Well, you know, if that's if she's the one that's involved in the story, you need to talk to the players. Right. I'm not telling you to talk to her. I understand. I'm telling you to talk to whatever players you're talking about in your little in your story there. You talk to them, and whoever you said right rode there with me or whatever, talk to them. So over, but you guys have got this also. So over the last several years. months, well over a half a year, we have talked to a lot of people. Okay. Okay. And we can tell you right now, Nicole's in front of a grand jury. Okay. Okay. There is, you say talk to her. We have. There is a. There's a story there. Oh, okay. I didn't know okay. that. So, okay. so I'm just letting you know that. So we have a story. So we want to get. Your side of it. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, okay. So we know what's true and what's not true. All right. So are we going to tell you everything that we know? Of course not. Okay. I don't think you would expect that. All right. Well, what I do expect is for you to tell me where I fit in. What is my crime in these stories that you're talking about? What are, what are, what's my crime? Why the fuck did I get handcuffs put on me? I mean, I can hear you guys wanting to talk about this and that, wanting to get stories straight, but why am I getting treated like this? Why am I not? Why didn't you call me up and ask me to come in and talk? Why did you come and have me? Would you, you have come and chatted with us? I would have came in. I, I definitely would have came in, mm -hmm. but I probably wouldn't have talked to you. Okay. And I'm not really talking to you now. I really don't have any answers for your stories. I'm not going to straighten your stories out for you and stuff, especially not if, unless I find out what the hell my part of it is. I'm interested in my own self, you know what I mean? And what do you mean Nicole's in front of a grand jury? What are you talking about? Like right now she's sitting in front of a grand jury? That, that's right. Oh, wow. So, well, shortly is my you. dog safe? No, your dog is safe. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> good, good, good. Excellent. Hmm. That's very important to me. Okay. The police have advised Mark that Nicole is testifying in front of a grand jury as they speak to him. What this means is that whatever potential out that Nicole could have given him, saying that she was responsible for all the thefts, will most likely never happen. Nicole is speaking to the grand jury about the murder of Bagger Bob and the events that transpired before and after his killing, and as a result of testifying in front of a grand jury, she will not be able to reconnect with Mark and have their stories match. The end result is, whatever alibi Mark had created will undoubtedly be proven a lie. So, now what? So, well, I, I'm not, am I arrested for anything? Uh, you're being detained at this point. Okay, but I'm not under arrest quite yet. That's correct. Okay, then I don't need a lawyer quite yet. Okay. So, um, she is indicated that, that uh, certain things took place after this robbery, theft, whatever it was, the one where the FedEx guy came to the house, and uh, I think he wanted to call the police, and she said, no, please call Mark, and I think yeah. that's, is that right? I'm not going to say whether that's right yeah. now, but is that your understanding? I'm listening to your story. Okay, and uh, the, from there, the, the series of events unfolded um, involving one of your club brothers, or former club brothers, okay? Okay. And uh, that's that's where some of this comes about, and, and it's, it's, you know, up to you to clarify for this what... Yeah, what all took place because there's fingers. Man, you know what? The story right. that you're talking about is somebody else's story. Okay. But okay. you're going to have to talk to somebody who, else. Who do you suggest we chat with? I'm not throwing names. I told okay. you. It's somebody else's story. You're the cop. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. Talk to somebody else. It's not my story. I'm not. I'm not I think you know that we've got it pretty well figured out. The question is, you're in a bit of a hole. We're trying to offer you a ladder to get out of this hole. Man, okay. Because here, so here we've got confused. here we've got Nicole sitting in front of a grand jury right now, and she's te testifying to them. 
Okay. okay. We know what she's going to tell them, okay. we presume. Um, that's not an issue. We have other people we've talked to, and I think you know who most of those people are. I Well, you think wrong, but anyway, okay. Okay. You're, uh, There's uh, several others, either now or shortly, are sitting in rooms like you are. Okay. okay. So. Okay. But what, so what? <laughs> tell me something that means something to me. Well, None of this you. means much to me so far. And, and Nicole, man, uh, you know, she's got real problems, you know, and her problem is she's sitting in front of a grand jury right now. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure her problems are going to probably unfold in front of them. So, uh, so in any case, whatever, man. Talk to me about that later after she gets out of the grand jury. You've got, you're, you'll see what I'm saying. Nicole's got some serious problems, and she's got some serious lying problems. And if all her lies blow up in her face today, well, it's about time. Maybe that'll help her out a little bit. Maybe this whole experience will help her quit making up bullshit and telling lies. So, so anyway, that's enough about Nicole for me. You got, you got her in front of a grand jury. You got all the story you need from her. Uh, now, what else would you like from me? Well, it, it, I guess that depends on what you're willing to talk to us about. You don't want to give us names, so I'm not sure how we can talk about the folks that uh, well, you think we should go talk to. I don't think you should go talk to anybody. I don't care what you do, man. I really do not care what you do. You're not telling what am I doing sitting here? You haven't even told me that yet. Why am I here? Because, some, because of things that happened to me? I'm here because of stuff that happened to me. What yes, happened to you? <laughs> what happened to you? You guys are telling, you're telling the stories. You're telling the stories. We haven't said anything happened to you. What happened to you? Well, you said I was the one that showed up with somebody else in a car or something like that when the FedEx man called and stuff. You're telling me the story. Wouldn't that be something I happened just, to me? I thought you meant like you committed a crime. Or something. <laughs> or a crime. You are a cop to the bone. Or a crime <laughs> happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cop to the bone. That's funny, man. Yeah, yeah. I act, I'm acting like I commi committed a crime. No, I, I, think, you're, I think you misunderstood me, Mark. Well, I think that you, you said something happened to me. A crime. Check it out. I think that you guys have your stories really screwed up, really confused. <laughs> and I think that you're going to find that out. You're going to find. I, I believe if, if they well, got help, help us, how should, if anybody's help us help got you with that, Nicole can, help us if anybody's got Nicole better, you should go maybe watch that little deal and see what you got in front of you there. Well, help us and maybe the you'll figure out what, what kind of bullshitter you've got and, and junkie you've got in front of you. And fucking, uh, and, and in the end, then come tell me you got some, that I did something. You know, I don't even know what you're, you haven't told me that I did anything wrong yet. Do you expect? Do you suspect me of something? Well, help us get this uncomfortable. Because if Will you suspect me of doing a crime, let me know so I can get a lawyer. You know what I mean? In a rare display of weakness, Mark basically begs the investigators to implicate him in a crime, or more specifically, Bagger Bob's murder, so Mark can be justified in asking for a lawyer. Mark can see the walls begin to close in, but he needs to have a direct reason to contact a lawyer. Again, while Mark has the right to ask for a lawyer, there's an element to the American judicial system that hinges itself on appearance. Mark doesn't want to appear guilty, so he wants to wait to ask for a lawyer for when he's being directly implicated. Don't, uh, well, I don't think we've accused you of committing No, you crime, haven't, have and that's why I'm, okay. I'm still looking at these marks on my wrists and going, man, what a way to treat somebody who's not suspected of doing a crime. Okay. You know? So help us get this thing unconfused. Because you're saying, go talk to people, but we don't okay, know who to talk you, to. Here you go. Okay. All right, man. I'm going to help you get unconfused, all right. all right? If you think that I did something wrong, anything, okay, any kind of crime, let me get my lawyer over here, and I will tell my lawyer, you know what? Give these guys a lie detector test. Just take a lie detector test. Don't make these cops suspect the wrong people. So if you think guys think I did anything wrong, hit me with a lie detector test or something. I've got nothing to fucking hide. I got nothing to hide, and I just got nothing to say. It's against my fucking nature to sit here and talk to cops. Now, I told you more than I probably wish I would have already, okay? Just, I should have even told you my name. You know what I mean? You got my name. You don't, you're playing games. You don't need to know my name. You knew my name before you brought me in here. In any case, if you think I did something, you know, and, and you really do, if you really think I did something wrong, then you guys maybe maybe think about giving me a lie detector test and see and think, lay it out. Lay what you think I did out on a lie detector test. I, I just want a lawyer there just to make sure that I'm doing the right thing or whatever. But uh, I'm willing to do that just so you guys don't bark up the wrong tree. But I'm not willing to sit here and tell you stories like some piece of shit rat. Okay? You got your world, I got mine. Mm -hmm. In my world, rats are pieces of shit. I'm not going to okay. sit here telling on Nicole. I'm not going to sit here telling on anybody. I'm not going to say you're telling on anybody for anything. 
So you said Nicole has has issues that are probably going to come out when she testifies. Will you? Oh, I think Bill's probably <laughs> she's right. in front of grand jury. They're probably looking at issues right now. So one of those Her, issues that, that we would have to be. She's a terrible with. liar. She's a terrible, terrible liar. So Was she used her last night? Uh, no, she had, no, she's been off. She's been off now for days, and so she's, she she's pretty hurting right now. She yeah. jumps in for it. What what's oh, she used mostly? Um, she's addicted to pain pills. Completely, completely okay. addicted to pain pills. She used anything besides the pain pills? No. She shooting anything? Oh no, no, no okay. Nothing like that. Again, Mark directly tells the investigators that if they believe he was involved in a crime, to say it, and that he would contact his lawyer. He also says that he would have the lawyer ask Mark himself to take a lie detector test. This is a common strategy that suspects will use, believing that by asking for a lie detector test, it will help them appear innocent. It's almost a certainty that Mark knows that they won't, and if they did, he already knows that lie detector test results are inadmissible in court. And again, Mark seems to go against his own moral code. On one hand, he says he's not going to talk about Nicole's personal matters or her dealings, and on the other, he talks about her involvement in the burglary, her whereabouts, and her problems with substance abuse. Okay. We talking like oxy's or something like that? I'm not, you know, but you have to get that from her. Everybody knows it. I mean, the fucking hospitals know it and stuff. The police know it. Everybody knows it out that way. So I'm not telling you nothing that isn't pretty much. Okay. But right now, I can't say she's addicted because she hasn't taken them for quite a, for quite a, quite some time now. Okay. As, as far as I know, unless okay. she sneaks them, she's not the, the real truthful to me either. So. Okay. Is that what's driving? Is it? Is, let me ask. Let me, before, let me questions finish, about let me Nicole. You, you can get let them all from her. You've got her in front of the grand jury. Let, ask her herself. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Too. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I'm well, wrong. Let me ask she you, might have lied to me about having pills. <laughs> can I ask you one question about, about yes. that? Okay. Um, she set up. You, you're saying she set up this step thing back in. Uh, I'm saying ask remember? her about. The, you know, you've got the you've got the story from her. Okay. I'm saying I'm saying I'm not saying nothing. I don't even know. Okay. He hasn't asked the question yet. Yeah. So let me finish the question. So, well, I said I didn't. I didn't give an answer. I said I'm not saying nothing. That answers oh. most questions right there. Uh, I really Almost does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. So, so yeah. but let me finish my question okay. before you refuse to answer. Okay. Okay. No <laughs> the question that I was going to pose to you, and it's more of a gut feeling question. Uh, do you think that she set up this theft thing with a the FedEx guy called you? You said her, she and her junkie friends had to do with that because of her pill issues. I believe that Nicole has lied to me about over half the things she's told me since I've known her. Okay. That's what I believe. I believe, and well, so I, I catch her in lies all the all the stinking time. So why are you still with her? I don't even. I don't know, man. Because she's so down and out. I mean, when I try to make her leave, she literally stands in parking lots. And she literally stand, stood in the parking lot all night long. And, and the next day when I got out of Kaiser over there, at Kaiser, and she, she acted like a homeless and tried to talk people into letting her charge her phone and stuff. And the next day when I got off work, when I hoped she went to her mom's or something, I called her and, and she says she's still standing in that same parking lot I dropped her off in. And my heart just sinks, you know, and I go over there and she's laying on the ground crying and stuff. And I finally just, okay, baby, come on. But she knows. I, I, I'm sure she, uh, well, at least one thing about it, the way, anything, any bads that she has on me, I'm sure she's more than willing to tell you right now. So that's okay. So any kind of bad she has on me, go ahead and go get it from her because she's hating on me right now because I've been telling her that it's done and she really needs to find another place to stay. But I, it's hard for me to really throw my friends, a friend out like that. So the friendship part of it makes me let her keep it on staying there even though she uh, does me wrong. I'm just going to leave it at that. She does me wrong a whole lot and she has done me a whole lot of wrong. And it's kind of a yo-yo thing. Uh, you keep really taking good. her back, giving her another chance. and Yeah. Yeah. How long has that been going on? I'm talking years? Three years. Three yeah. years. About three years she's really been, since I really started realizing that she, what she was doing mm -hmm. to, to me, that, and that she's, so she's a thief, you know. I mean, straight up. And, and I'll tell her that. She knows that. I tell her every time. She knows it all the time. Mm -hmm. And But uh, I think it's her addiction, you know, that causes her to be to steal Have you ever seen plot and make plans and do all this stupid yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, she's yeah. done? I don't believe any of it. I don't believe anything she says. I can't say, I, you know, I don't know this and know that. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm only speculating here. Sure. But I think that anything that comes out of Nikki's mouth is a lie myself. Okay. And uh, so she knows I've never believed a whole lot of things. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen her for a stretch of time where she was actually clean? 
I, well, I ask her that too. I, there was a stretch of time when I thought she was, mm-hmm. but then I find out that she wasn't. You know what I mean? Okay. I was wrong. You know what I mean? So I don't know much about addictions and stuff. I don't have any. any I, can, I smoke pot. Mm-hmm. That's the only, uh, and I don't think I'm addiction, addicted to that. It's legal in Washington. So. Well, I know. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think I have it. So I don't have any addictions. Right. You know what I mean? So I really don't know that much about them. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think she might have been. Not clean when she was saying she was, too, I, I think. Okay. You know what I mean? So I don't know if I've ever seen her. You didn't know if her um, behaviors actually changed when during that period you thought she was oh, clean? She, or she, she was withdrawals and stuff. She she literally does it, you know, sure. feet shaking, rolling around, sweating, the whole deal, you know sure. what I mean? That should only last about a week if she don't. Is parents, that right? right? Well, I'm guessing. Uh, I, I, don't know. I don't know much about nothing Most about of the pill poppers tell me that it takes seven to ten days or so. Well, I wondered. I get different stories. I have her on the Internet checking it out all the time, trying to figure herself out. Right. But anyway, so that's it there. And like I said, get, go check Nicola and see what kind of stories she's telling today. Okay. It'd, it'd be interesting to me, too, <laughs> to hear what she has to say. No. So she sure which stories she's going to go with today. Okay. Well, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to ask you. At least you've got feeling on it. So that period last summer, she was hitting it pretty hard with the pills? Oh, God, I don't remember just when she was and when she wasn't. Okay. For she might be doing it all the time. For all I don't know. She had. I'm not gonna tell all her stories. You know. I'm not gonna tell. You know. To, Is she able to work? What? Does she ever hold a job? Ask her. Okay. Ask her. I'm not gonna sit here and talk about Nicole any longer. You got her in front of a grand jury. Jesus Christ! I'm ask her all the questions they want. Okay. I was just curious if, if you could tell me if she had, my side had, of had employment or something Nicole. like that. If she can hold. All I can tell you, and this is my st- my statement about Nicole. Mm-hmm. I don't know when she's telling me the truth or when she's not. Okay. And so, and I don't know when she does and when she doesn't do anything because I never know what to believe anything, and I never know when to believe her and when not to. You know what I mean? So I really can't tell you for sure anything about her. I don't even know what goes on. But at, at my house when she stays there and when I'm gone and stuff because I'm not there all the whole time. So okay. I don't know what she does. Does she have a car? Uh, no, she's never had a car a day since I've known her. Okay. Does she have a license? Besides. Maybe one you might have heard a story about. Yeah. <laughs> she might have had one for a minute. Okay. <laughs> but uh, she's never had a car. She's never had a, a legitimate car since I've Well, police that. officers on that incident, on the report I read, said they had checked the paperwork and they said it was she had bought it. It was in her name. Yeah, she bought it. Yeah, she bought it. So that. It just wasn't. you saying it wasn't legitimate? It wasn't her money that she uh, bought it with. Was yeah. that the club money? That's what. Oh, no, no. 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 Uh, but, you know, to, to, to get into that, I would have to start telling stories, and I'm not going to get into telling no story, man. I'm just, I'm sorry. If you want to hear that story, listen to it on the street. You're not going to hear it from me. You know what I mean? You you guys uh, believe what, but, and, and the truth is, I don't really understand the story that you're talking about. What It, it doesn't even have anything to do with, if you guys are hunting for, uh, for about bagger, which I'm sure that's what it is. I mean, fucking, uh, your guys ain't here fucking wanting, wanting to fucking arrest uh, Nicole for stealing something from me. And if you're doing that, then this car story and shit doesn't, fucking, what's it even got to do with any fucking thing? It ain't got nothing to do with nothing, so why do you even care? The car that's in question, an Acura, was bought and registered under Nicole's name. The problem with that is that the money that Nicole used to buy that car was stolen from Mark. Mark again has an issue with the line of questioning. What does all of this have to do with Bagger Bob? The reason why is because all of these incidents are linked together. Bagger Bob stole everything from Mark, and Nicole apparently got the money from Bagger Bob. I mean, you're, ta- you're, you're talking about something that ain't got nothing to do with fucking nothing in the first place, or any story. Well, the story is interesting, because we were told it was all tied together. It all stemmed from the same thing. And if we're wrong, it is the time to correct us. So <laughs> we only how could it, tell me how they could be connected, what's connected with what? Maybe you could explain it to me because I don't even know what you're talking about. How in the hell could if uh, if Nicole if Nicole did something? Let's say she took my money and went and bought shit with it. Okay? okay, let's just say that happened. Hypothetically, you know? right? Hypothetically, sure. let's just say she she was cleaning and she happened to find my money mm-hmm. and she went and bought shit with it like a thief and, and hid like a thief in the night. Okay, okay? like she's probably done before. Let's just no, you know, like. She probably, but let's just say she did that. Okay. She did that. What the fuck does that have to do? How could it tie in with any? What are you talking about? Tie in with anything? What are you talking about? What does it have to do with the fucking uh, FedEx man or anything? FedEx man didn't wasn't there <laughs> when she took my money. Okay, and then I'm confused. Yeah, you sure are, man. You sure are because that was a long period apart. You're talking about 
I mean, there's been a million incidents, but okay. the two incidents that you're bringing up weren't even related. They're, and they were so long how far ways apart are they? Months. You say a long ways, months. Okay, yeah, months apart or something. Okay. I don't remember. But in any case, you're. Uh, I don't. I guess all the stories that you're putting together, they, I don't see how they relate to each other. Okay. In any way, as far as well, well we had heard that that Bagger was part of the thing that happened that the, when the FedEx guy showed up. That's what we heard. Nicole's going to have to tell you that story. Like I said, the best. What you're doing the best thing that you can, and that's. Get Nicole up there, you know what I mean, to tell the story because uh, hopefully today she's telling you guys exactly what's going on. And she probably should be if she realizes how serious a shit her mouth can, can cause. Hopefully she's straight and she's telling you whatever. whatever did did she tell you that Bagger was one of the people who came and tied her up? I'm not going to answer any, any more questions for you. Okay. At all or just about that incident? Um, I think... I think that, I, man, I, the truth is, if you, I think I'll just not answer any more at all and, and have you guys arrest me so I can see what the hell I'm, I'm under arrest for if you're not going to tell me. Because <laughs> I want to know where I fit in. <laughs> you know? I, I hear what you're barking at and stuff, and I don't really understand some of the stuff, why in the hell you even care about it. Because I'm not going to press no charges on anybody, so I don't even know why you guys even give a shit. But I am interested in what the hell I'm going to get arrested for, so arrest me for it so we can go from there. Okay. Well, Scott and I are going to arrest you for anything right now. What we're asking, what we're asking well, is I some background. Okay. Oh, okay. You know, I'm just still confused okay. at why. I'm, if you're asking I mean, my whole couple hands Oregon went officers, they crashed that so hard yeah, that my hands fell asleep. I couldn't even feel them. In there. I've never. Mm -hmm. I've been handcuffed plenty of times in my life. Mm -hmm. I've never been handcuffed that hard before. So I'm trying to figure out why I'm getting treated like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm assuming that they handcuffed you because they're probably you know, worried about me, your affiliation. It's me and a lawyer, just so you know. I know some of the stories you talk. I, I've heard, I know some of these, these stories, and I know what she said, and I know I know all of her stories. And when I say all of her stories, because I'm saying it's going to be really interesting seeing what story she actually tells today. Hopefully, she'll tell the true one. Whatever she tells in front of the cops today, hopefully that'll be a true story. You know what I mean? Because she tells a lot of bullshit ones. Maybe sure. I'll even be able to separate separate okay. out what really happened back then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If she was going to tell the truth today, what might she say? <laughs> Really? Really? Do you really think I'm going to sit here and tell I just got done telling you. I'm not going to tell a story. Do you think that was a good method of trying to get me to tell this story? I just told you, get it from her, man. I ain't the one that's going to. And the truth is, and, and the stories that we're talking about, I think you're going to find out in the end, they got nothing to fucking do with anything you guys even give a shit about. I mean, you really got some stuff confused. And, and I do say again, and, and I, I really, as far, all this is on personal. Because I'm not going to help, help you with your case. You're, you're the cops. You do it yourself. You figure it out yourself. But on a personal note, if you guys think that I'm involved in anything, either from the from bagger to fucking the thefts, the any of that, if you think uh, there's any bad on my part, give me a lie detector test. Check it out. Because I don't want you guys wasting your fucking time running around looking at me when you're you're wasting your time completely. You know, make sure you're right, you're, you're right about this stuff. You know what I mean? Don't waste your time barking up the wrong tree. I don't want to waste your time. I'm not going to sit here and be the, the rat and tell you all kinds of stories about everybody I know and who people's names and who I know. Not. It's just not going to happen. But what I would do is if you guys, any time during this stuff, think that I did bad, I'm, I'm telling you, man, give me a lie detector test, man. But find out for sure. I submit to one. I got no lies in me. I, I don't. I, I may not be willing to tell you a bunch of stories, but I didn't. I've got done no bad. So I would take a lie detector test, man. We, and that's the best I can do for you because the only thing I can think of that ain't telling stories. And in that lie detector test, I won't answer no questions. Okay. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm just. I just will. You could ask me, if, did I do any bad? And I'm going to say no. And I'll ask. It's a polygraph, I, probably well, a little bit more specific. Yeah, well, whatever. I yeah. I'm, I'm in, in general too. If you guys are interested in that, you can find out whether you've even got a, one of the a, a right fucking person to talk to. You know. Okay. What I mean? Because so, uh, let me ask you this then: Did her story change to you? From the first time she told you about what happened the day that FedEx guy was there to a later event. Did she change her story? Did her evolve? stories change the plan several right. times, yes. What's the first thing she told I'm you? not going to go to it, man. You can try, but I'm not going to sit here and start telling you details about stories. And why would you need me to? I'm telling you. Well, if it affects her credibility. Well, check it out. Okay. Her credibility isn't going to go very far today anyway. Okay. But number one, because... 
<laughs> she's so full of bullshit that they're going to probably sniff it out in the first. Okay. Uh, I can't imagine. I would love to see this. I would just love to see the, her talking to, I don't even know what a grand jury looks like or whatever, if it's a few people or a bunch of people or what we're talking about. But I would sure like to see her in there trying to get all her stories to match up and stuff because it's going to, I just, just, I can't imagine it not being just a complete uh, okay. Incredible farce. Well, how did it change from the from when she first well, gave her act about Oh, listen, anger. you're missing it. Not, if she's in there now, you should okay. be in there listening. So that wouldn't tell me how it changed from what she told you first. And I'm not going to tell you how it changed from okay. one thing to another. I'm not telling. I'm not telling the stories on on people, man. All okay. I'm doing is trying to defend myself. But, but you're the only one who can tell us what she told you, right? Well, well that's, that's true. That's true. And and like I said, if uh, if if I get arrested for fucking. Domestic? I, and that's what I really thought until this me towards, brought me towards uh, Portland. I thought that they had decided to press a domestic charge on me because Nicole tries to try to kind of plead to the police like if I'm a bully or something like that okay. sometimes. And then she plays then a she, she, card. Oh, yeah, the cops all know. And, she's, she, and then she'll admit it to them, too. Mm-hmm. She'll tell them this, a completely different later. She'll go, no, I lied. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. She's completely <laughs> lost in her stories. So, and, and I... And, I'm not po- trying to apologize, you guys, but I will, since she's my friend, I'll apologize for Nicole because I'm telling you what, you're going to find today that she's a story-telling person, and then she has to live that way. All day, all the time I say to her, Nicole, why can't you just live a normal life and be truthful? But mm-hmm. she, she's, and I knew sooner or later all her bullshit would tie her all up and catch her up in this. And today, hopefully, she's fucking in there. Uh, I knew sooner or later. I mean, she's, like I said, she's, She's done some, some kind of low things. I and mean, I know you guys would probably look at me like the other cops do, like, you're crazy for even even talking to her anymore. And it is crazy. It really is to me. But I think something inside me says that the drugs make her do it, you know. And, and, and some for some reason, I, I think she's so driven by the drugs that it makes her do the, the most incredible stuff. And maybe if she was clean, she'd be a different person. A whole different person. Yeah, it's, I blame it really. I blame it all on the addiction. And, and uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, her stories have, have obviously now all got her in some kind of hot water, too, which I'd already heard was going to, I already knew was going to happen. You know what I mean? I've heard a bunch of stuff about, about Nicole uh, telling all these stories. I know all the stories and stuff like that. I'm just not going to sit here and discuss them with you. Okay. Would you tell me at least the first thing she told you when you got home that day? No. No, I won't. Okay. Now you have to get that from her. Okay. Uh, get, and, and the... But even though you're the only one who could tell us what she told you, Well, we wouldn't know what she told you different, or t- said different. Not really, us. because first she had the FedEx man call me. Okay. So, I, so it wouldn't be her, it would be the FedEx man, but, I, but he can tell you too. So mm-hmm. it's not nothing I have anything mm-hmm. to say about. I'm not going to tell the story. Okay. I'm not going to be the man who talk, who's talking about that, those kind of stories. You're going to have to get them from them. And if you don't get the right story, I'm sorry, but the truth is, who gives a fuck? Because there's, not, no, there's no big crime involved with any of this. You know, so what do you guys even care? I'm not pressing no charges. On I'm the one that lost out, not anybody else. I'm the one that should be mad. Well, I'm the one that had a lawyer try to talk me into pressing charges. And I told him I'm not that guy. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sell out for any amount of money. Just could, even if it's a, even if she did me wrong big time, I'm not going to sell out on it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but you're also the only one who can help us correct the credibility issues yeah. that you say. Well, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to find another cop to do that. What I will do is, like I said, if you guys any time think that I did bad personally to where I'm going to get any more of this kind of treatment, I'd be willing to talk about a lie detector test, so you guys can know whether you're dealing with a lying fucker or not, because I don't like liars, and I'm not a liar. And you would see that uh, with any kind of uh, lie detector test. And that's about all I can offer you. And even, well, just, just even that lie detector test, the lie there's de- some questions that I wouldn't, but we, I'm not going to get into a bunch of stories. A lie detector test is usually used to confirm or deny a story, but you haven't given us one. We don't just take somebody into a lie detector lie detector test unless you've given us a story. Well, we don't, you like know, I said, if you guys have a story that you think that I did bad in, and you want to ask me that over a lie detector test, so well, we would ask you first, first, which is what we're trying to do. But we're not going to. Yeah, but you, you don't just go into a lie detector test. It doesn't work. Oh, well, I don't know anything. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just trying to. Story look, I don't care. I don't, I don't need to take a lie detector. I don't want to take a lie detector test anyway. I was just offering that to you guys. So you didn't. If you guys are wasting your time like right now, barking up somebody, the tree of somebody who's done no wrong, 
then maybe somebody should help you not waste your time doing that. Because right now, you can do what, say do whatever you want, but man, dude, I didn't fucking do anything. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to do with fucking Bobby Bagger's murder, if that's what you're talking about. I mean, believe me, it's on the, we know what, on the street, we, we heard the, that the guy got fucking murdered. Everybody knows it. If you think that I had something to do with any kind of thefts, or even had anything to do with the guy that you're showing right there, uh, uh, and the, the car thing and stuff that day, man, you're just wrong, man. You got the, you're barking up the wrong tree. You got your stories all confused and shit. I'm sorry that's, that's that way for you, but you definitely got some stories all mixed together that don't have to do with each other. And, and hopefully Nicole is, will straighten you guys out on that today because it sounds like they're her stories. Has Bagger ever been to your house? Her stories, her scams. See, now you're, see, I think that, I think whether he has or not ever been to my house, mm -hmm probably isn't going to really help you too much. So I think information like that, I can wait for to tell my lawyer and have my lawyer tell you whether or not anybody's ever been over to my house and stuff before. I think that would be my better interest. Okay. Well, if Nicole says she has, is she telling us a fib or is she telling us the truth? <laughs> now, you I'm know not Nicole gonna, and I don't. Put, you know, but maybe put her on a lie detector test. And watch this happen. Watch this. Watch that machine smoke. <laughs> Put her on a lie detector test. Find out from her. But it's just not going to be from me, man. Get it from that guy. I can't remember what you said his name was. Jeff Sudan. Jeff Sudan. Get the story from Jeff Sudan, man. And, 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 you know, and when it's all done, then tell me what the hell, you know, tell me what you even, why did I get handcuffed today? Why did I get treated like this, man? I ain't got, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. I think you got treated, I think you got handcuffed because of your associates. This is, I mean, I well, think that's, that's man, basically what it is, right? You'd be under arrest when you did that, you know what I mean? I'm a pretty easy to go on guy, you know, and you know, all anybody had to do is call me on the phone and say, hey, Mark, some detectives want to talk to you in Portland. Would you have any problem coming in? I'd have came in and sat here just like I am today, just so you know. What do you think I'd do? What, go, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you do. You, know? <laughs> okay, well, you hang around with a certain, certain group of people, and sometimes stories yeah, get out Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and, and you guys have your stereotypes about certain groups of people. I do know that. And we do, too. So. Yeah, I think it's, it's common anytime two we groups don't understand each other, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can you clarify anything for us about Bagger Bob? Um. <sighs> think if I even want it. You know, any stories that I tell at all about that guy, mm -hmm. they dip into club business. They, it's club stuff. And I'm not going to go club stuff with you guys for nothing. That's just, okay. it's against my fucking rules and it ain't going to happen. Okay. You know, even when he was out of the club? Um, one, I will say one thing. One, uh, once that dude came out of the club, when I was out of the club, mm -hmm. I've never seen him or know anything about him since. Except for small little stories about people running into him and him flipping them off and driving off and little shit like that. Mm -hmm. Sightings, I guess you could call it. Okay. Other than that, I've never seen him, never heard nothing about him, except that he went full junkie. But uh, the truth is, the junkie shit, getting mm -hmm. copy in a junkie is what got him kicked out of the club. Okay. So, uh, is he a needle user or a smoker? Or what? Um, you know, really, I don't know what he mm -hmm. did. It's in tinfoil, you know, so do you okay. mix that and shoot it with a needle or do you smoke it? I really don't know. I don't, I don't know much about heroin. Enough, no, okay. I don't know much about heroin. I just know that it's some things are completely against our fucking rules. Sure. And that was one of them. If we would you, have the same rules. If you touch heroin or, or many other drugs around us, then we find out about it, you're out. Okay. And that's what happened to him. And I've never, and I don't know anything about him since then, except for hearing on the street what a piece of shit he was. Mm -hmm. He turned into a real, we thought he was maybe a piece of shit when we had him, well, he turned into a lot worse piece of shit. When did he leave the club? Left. And uh, I'm going to try to think if it was, I'm going to say, probably hasn't been too much over two years. From now? Yeah. Two years ago. Probably wasn't too much over two years ago, but it could have been three Time flies by pretty fast in my older age. I guess it could have been three years ago now. It's been a while. It's been a while. A lot, of, a lot more people were alive back then when he left than now. We've had a lot of deaths in our club lately. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, in any case, he's been out for a few years. He, he was a good friend of mine once. Was he? Yeah, he really was a good friend of mine once. And, and then in the end, I found out that he was just a lying piece of shit is what he really was. So it didn't hurt much. Was that the heroin too much. Thing? It was the heroin and lying and stealing and everything else, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't think that it's uh, uh, that big a deal to tell you guys that he 
he stole from the club. And then uh, when he got caught for it, he blamed it all on heroin, which was an automatic kick out for him. So right. it's not like we found out about the heroin. We found out about the stealing. Yeah. And when we jumped in about the stealing, he blamed it all on heroin. That's what happened. And he got kicked out of the club like anybody would. Mm -hmm. Some people come to us and admit they, they smoked heroin or, or, or uh, smoked meth or, or uh, smoked coke. You know what I mean? And uh, we, get, we have to kick them out. Whether they're coming to tell. Uh, sometimes I wonder why they come and tell us. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, gee, and then some guys we kick them out, and then we hear they quit. I should have quit before we kicked them out. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. But we do have our stand, and some things will get you kicked right out of the club. And stealing is one of them, and heroin is definitely another one. So. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, similar rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, like I said, where his life went after that, I don't know. I heard where it ended up, mm -hmm. which doesn't surprise me much. You know, I'm just knowing. Knowing Bagger, you know, and listening to the stories you used to tell, which I'm not telling you from back in the club, mm -hmm. it didn't surprise me much because okay. I guess he was a bigger piece of shit than we. We couldn't even pull him out of his out of his piece of shitness. That's okay. <laughs> the way I look at it. Because if you if you think I have a bad attitude towards him, it's true. I don't have a good attitude towards anybody who ever steals from our motorcycle club. You know what I mean? He got kicked out. He deserved it, and I'm glad he did. Well, did he pissed a lot of people off. Did he have people that he pissed off outside the club? Uh, I, you know, I don't even know that he knew anybody outside the club back then. I don't know that he ever brought friends around, or I don't remember him ever really having friends. I don't think that, I think he was doing drugs. I really believe in my heart, but I don't know this, that he was doing drugs when he was with us for a lot longer than I, than I don't think he just had started there when, when at the end there. Yeah. And uh, I think that, uh, I think that he was probably doing drugs a lot longer, and he probably has a bunch of friends, but he probably didn't talk to us about them because they're probably drug friends or something. Right. But I'm only speculating, man. I don't. I really don't know anything about him. I only know about active members. So you didn't hear anything on the street that there was, he had enemies? No. no. Nothing. No, the only per people I ever heard uh, say anything about him was people that said, man, you know, I seen him at a stop sign or something. He saw me and he went like this and tore out. And that's the only story that I ever remember hearing about him, period, after he left the club. I don't think I even ever heard any other any story about any, even any other sightings. I don't think I knew anybody that saw him. I didn't even know for sure if he still lived around here for sure until I heard that somebody saw him over by a bar or driving by the Mystic or something like that and flipped him off. Where, story I ever heard about. Where had he been living when he was a club member? Was it in Portland or was it somewhere else? You know, uh, he's he uh, different places, girls and wives and stuff. You know, he lived with a wife and then he lived with a girlfriend and. Towards the end there, yeah, I never ever went. I've never. We were never like such close friends that I went to his house or anything. Okay. So I, I don't know have any idea where they'd ever left, lived or anything. I can't remember if it was Washington, Oregon, or where the hell he lived with girlfriends. Mm -hmm. He had a house somewhere. I think he was married once and had a house somewhere or something, and an ex-wife or something. I, I actually, when he first started coming around the club, I he think he brought, he was still married or something because I think that was the girl that he used to bring to some of our parties years ago. I think that was his wife, and then I think. They divorced somewhere along the way or something. I really don't know. Do you know I know he had girlfriends after that, so I'm sure, sure. He and his wife split up. Do you remember her name? The wife? I don't know. Man, I don't know. Annie, the girl, any old lady. I don't know most of the fellas' names. You know, okay. uh, they're not a gypsy joker. And, and most of the gypsy jokers, I don't know their last names. Happens all the time. People say, you know, so and so, and they know, and they like you just showed me that picture. Could have been one of my brothers because mm -hmm. we don't call each other by our last. Is names. that intentional? Just kind of. It just no. It's just. It doesn't come up for any reason, for some reason. We don't have the conversation. Um, unless you happen to, you know, uh, a guy gets in trouble and you see his name in the paper or something like that, you go, oh, and it happens all the time where we go, that's what your last name is? <laughs> and we'll make fun of it, you know, because never thought that would be. Even their first name. Some guys come around with, with uh, uh, road names or handles or whatever you want to call it. So when I even hear their whole name, their first name, it blows my mind sometimes because you expect them to be a, a rough first name and they right. just find out it's Vernon or somebody, you know. <laughs> oh, if you're Vernon, your name's Vernon, excuse me. But in any case, uh, uh, so anyway, that's the story about names. Okay. Well, but no, I've uh, never heard anything about him after he left the club okay. until I until I heard about him getting killed and shit. Do you know what kind of what, what he was driving besides a bike when he was a club member? I don't think so. I don't remember any uh, car or anything. 
think if he had anything, it would probably be a girlfriend's vehicle or something, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't remember any of that. What kind of bike did he ride? I'm done with stories. I'm done with stories. You're just dig- digging for too many. I mean, you guys can find all this stuff out. You don't need me. Jesus, you're investigators. You don't need me to find out the simple questions, man. You're, if you're just trying to get me to start talking, man, I am, man. I, you know, I'm telling you a little bit of stuff, but I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to... I'm really not going to help you guys out on this case. If that's what I'm here for, is to try to help you out, I'm not. I'm really not. You're going to have to do it on your own, man. Uh, I'm not going to tell stories about the club and well, this and that. And, and why, uh, you know, the, I'm telling you, I've already told you the common stuff. This is what pretty much everybody knows. It ain't hard for you guys to find out that the fucking guy got kicked out of our motorcycle club. Sure. That is not hard what, to find what, out. What's the last time you were actually eyes on with Bagger? Was he a club member then, or was yeah. it after? Did he uh, have a club uh, off uh, at some stuff? Well, at the same time, he was going. I saw him when he was going out. Okay. I saw him. So he was and wasn't at the same time. Okay. <laughs> the last time I saw him. That's the last time. He was know. until we told him get the fuck out of here, and then he wasn't. So I saw him. He was and wasn't that same day. And that's the last time I've ever seen him. Okay. Um, did he ever come by and, and vandalize anything of yours? No. Okay. Hell no. Hell no. Bagger? Uh, the, well, is he a cheap shot guy or is he someone who... I, you know, I really don't know. And I, like I said, I'm not going to answer questions about okay. Bagger. Okay. But he never, he never did anything to you? No. Okay. You never went eyes on with him again after that when he was he, out of the club? He, uh, he respected me, I think. And, okay. and, he, and he talked very nice to me any time I ever saw him. I'll okay. tell you that he never, me and him never had a bad word. In the end, I found out he was a piece of shit junkie. Right. So I, I, I admit I hold that against him because I spent a lot of time with the guy and stuff and kind of gave him my heart, sort of like, you know. And uh, so when people just dis- really disgrace us like that and stuff, it leaves a real bad taste in my mouth. I will admit that. Mm-hmm. But that's the end of it. When you're done with us, you're just done. So if anything that happened too much of that, I have no idea. Like I said, one thing about our motorcycle club is when you're done with us, you're just done with us. We got no time for you. We got no words for you. You won't be getting any more calls. Okay. Won't be nothing. You know what I mean? You're done. And it's he's Bagger, just one of a lot of guys that the same kind of shit happens to. It's it's part of the life. Okay. Do you know who you rode with before? He was one of your guys, or? Well, I don't think anybody. If he did, it was oh. it's news to me. Okay. Is he from our area? I mean, I is, is he from that either. Portland, Washington? I don't know that either. Yeah. I don't know where he's from. You know what I mean? You can, but you know, like all that stuff. I don't know why you're asking me these questions. You know? I thought you, you were guys kind of are sure. With him well, I was. But you guys know Caleb and stuff. You know what I mean? You know his son. I know his son. Caleb could probably give you all those answers. Okay. I'm, I'm sure you guys have wouldn't talk. Oh well, I'm you sure should. someone has. Maybe you should. And, and, and maybe his ex girlfriends and stuff. And you can get all this information for them. I'm sure. I'm sure he sat there and told it. Don't ask me for it. It's all I'm asking. It's simple information that you guys can get from a whole lot of people. I don't want to be the one. Okay. Well, I clarified what I wanted to know, and that was whether or not you'd got eyes on with him after he left the club. I've never seen him. And he never vandalized anything of yours. Never. I've never seen him for a second. Okay. Never seen him for a second. Okay. Hey, do you mind if we take a break? Do you want to put water or anything? Now I would, yeah. No, so we'll no, get no, you some water. Good. We're going to take a break for a second, and then we'll come back in and okay. figure out what's going to happen, okay? Okay. All okay. Right. I got the time at 10.43. I'm going to take a break for a sec. All right. Just hang tight. All right. All right. The truth of what happened to Bagger Bob and how Mark and the Gypsy Jokers were involved would finally come to light in the courtroom. Bagger Bob was kicked out of the Gypsy Jokers in 2014 after he was caught stealing from his clubmates to feed his heroin addiction. He was stripped of his club patch, beaten, and completely excommunicated from the club. A few months later, in retaliation, he broke into Mark Denclaw's house, restrained and beat Nicole, who was present at the time, and stole as many valuable items as possible, mostly money and firearms. The Gypsy Jokers immediately went on the hunt for Bagger Bob, who they found in a Portland area home. Just after 10 p.m. on June 30th, the bikers began circling the neighborhood in various vehicles, waiting for Bagger to show his face. At 10.54 p.m., he was spotted and then subsequently kidnapped. 
He was driven across state lines into Washington, where he was subjected to unrelenting torture before meeting his brutal end. Various members of the Gypsy Joker Motorcycle Club, including Mark Denclaw, would go to federal court in December of 2021 for the killing of, and crimes related to the killing of, Robert Bagger Bob Huggins. They were convicted of murder in the aid of racketeering, kidnapping in the aid of racketeering resulting in death, kidnapping resulting in death, and conspiracy to commit kidnapping resulting in death. Additionally, Denclaw was found guilty of racketeering conspiracy. Mark Denclaw remains incarcerated at an unnamed federal correctional facility where he will remain for the rest of his life.